We're so excited to show you today how you can use VS Code to develop anything from anywhere. My name is Bridget Murtaugh, and I'm a program manager on the VS Code team here at Microsoft. And I'm Connor Pete. I'm a software engineer on VS Code. All right, so while this is going to be a demo pack session, we first want to set the stage with just a little bit of context. It's no surprise that we're in an increasingly remote, distributed world with even more complex applications. As we've talked to customers over the past few years, we've observed how their coding scenarios have evolved over time. For instance, they may have a huge monorepo that doesn't really fit on their local machine. Or they may be working on machine learning and data science workloads that are really GPU heavy. Or we've gotten interested in using the latest remote technologies directly from VS Code, like the Windows subsystem for Linux, or WSL, which provides a real Linux kernel on a Windows machine. As we've talked to customers and we've observed things getting more complex, we really feel like your development environment shouldn't have to feel complex. So we found there are continued opportunities to provide an even greater remote development experience. For instance, you should easily access the code you need, backed by source control. You shouldn't be restricted to just the terminal, or just the browser, or just the desktop. You should be able to work wherever and however you want and feel more comfortable, and everything should feel as seamless as possible. With these motivations in mind, in 2019, we released the VS Code Remote Development Extensions, which let you use WSL, a container, or a remote machine as a full-featured development environment. You can access any source code or dependencies on those remotes directly from your local VS Code. The, command, the extensions also run commands directly in the remote, so things are going to work just like when you work locally. Now, I do want to mention that you may remember the first two extensions under a different name, Remote WSL and Remote Containers. When we launched VS Code Remote Development, we were, used the word remote to mean, hey, I'm developing somewhere other than my traditional local desktop. But understandably, users would come in and hear remote and think, well, this WSL or this container must be in the cloud or must be on someone else's machine, which doesn't have to be the case. So late last year, we renamed these extensions to just WSL and dev containers to be a little bit clearer. Now, into the next year, 2020, work was continuing on another project that fits really well into this remote vision, GitHub Codespaces. Codespaces provide cloud-powered development environments suitable for any activity whether it's something short-term, like reviewing a PR, or something longer-term, like actually developing your application. You can work on Codespaces in the browser or in VS Code Desktop with the Codespaces extension. Now, while we were making all these great advancements in remote technologies, we still kept in the back of our mind the VS Code team's original vision, which was actually to build a development tool that could run fully serverless in the browser. Back in 2019, the top-level .dev domain names became available for purchase, so we grabbed a VS Code.dev, not really sure what we were going to do with it. Fast forward to 2021, and we released VS Code for the web, which is a lightweight version of VS Code running entirely in your browser, and we released it at that VS Code.dev domain name. So now that we've gotten some context on what we've been doing in remote and web technologies over the past couple of years in VS Code, let's see it in action. I'm going to get into some demos. So I'll switch over to my browser here. And I'm going to start off on github.com, as I'm sure a lot of us are working on code on GitHub. And this code here, this devcontainers.github.io, is actually a website that we publish as part of information about dev containers and their open specification, which I'll describe even more a little bit later. But all you really need to know right now is this is a repo stored on GitHub. And I'd like to go ahead and explore the code, maybe make some edits, and contribute back to it. So I could totally clone this in local VS Code if I wanted. But I can also choose to prepend VS Code.dev to the beginning of it. Now, when I do that, we're going to see that in the browser, it's going to look just like my desktop VS Code. We're going to see, for instance, on the left, it has all the activity bar icons that I'm used to with the file explorer and search. And I can see the actual files that were in my GitHub repo. Already loaded in my editor here, we can see a preview of my readme. And if I'd like, I can scroll down, and I can actually go ahead and make some edits to my readme as well. So if I felt like, mm, this website could use even more excitement, let's add an exclamation, let's say. And we can see here we get syntax highlighting and colorization. And depending on the kind of language, like for something Markdown or HTML or CSS, VS Code for the Web is really going to provide you a similar powerful experience like you get in the desktop. Now that I've made a change here, I can see in the source control or the SCM view that the change is indicated here. And if I'd like, I can just go ahead and commit it back to my repo, and that change will show up on GitHub, and it'll show up wherever else I have access to this code. Continuing on the left here, we can see I have the extensions view. 
So just like local VS Code or VS Code Desktop, we can install extensions to make our editor even more powerful. Something to note is that some extensions will work out of the box in VS Code for the web without any other modifications. But for some, it'll require a little bit of work just to make sure that they're web enabled. So to ensure as an extension author that your extension can be used anywhere with VS Code, we really recommend checking out our web extension authoring guide, which we have on our docs, so that way you can learn even more and get even more users to be able to use and love your extension. As we continue on the left here, we can see we have the typical accounts and gear menu. And if I click on this, we can see that I can use setting sync, which I think Sandeep was just describing. And that's going to ensure that if I'm working in the browser, I can still have the same extensions and shortcuts and key bindings that I'm used to in the desktop. And I can ensure that my VS Code editor is what I'm used to no matter where I'm working. So I'd like to go back to the Explorer here. And let's just say, I know this is the home page of my site, index.html. And I'd like to just, again, I'm so excited about dev containers, VS Code Day. I'd like to just add like some more exclamations here. Now, I'd like to actually run this site to see how it's working and to test out the change that I just made. I don't want to just commit it without testing. So typically, I'll open up the run and debug. I'll open up the terminal. When I open up the terminal here, I'll see that they're not available in the web editor. And again, this is because this is a lightweight version of VS Code running entirely in the browser. So it's going to be a little bit different than the desktop version. But it's no worries, because we provide easy ways for you, for you to continue working on another environment. So I could click on Continue Working On. And I see I have different options to continue in a code space or continue in my desktop VS Code. And for some even greater information about Continue Working On and GitHub in the browser, our colleague Joyce has a session later that we really recommend checking out. For now, I'd like to try out a GitHub code space. We mentioned these are these cloud-powered development environments. That sounds really interesting to me. Now, I can go ahead and create it from here. But just to save a little bit of time, I've gone ahead and already created my code space, and I have it running here. Now, as we check it out, we can see that this is pretty similar, again, to VS Code Dev or VS Code Desktop. I have all the same icons. I have my files here. But we can see if we open up the terminal or run and debug, it's a more full feature VS Code experience because it does have compute backing it. It's backed by a virtual machine, unlike VS Code.dev was, which is a more lightweight version of VS Code. So I think I'd like to go ahead and try running this app. I'll go over to the README because I think there's some information there about how to run it. And let's scroll down. We can see, OK, so there's some steps to build and run. And also in here, it talks more about dev containers. And I said this is even a site about dev containers. So I think it's also worth touching on that. So we can see in our project here, we have this .dev container folder. And within it is a dev container.json. A dev container is going to tell VS Code how to spin up your development environment with certain tools or dependencies or languages installed. So for instance, in this dev container JSON, I can see that it's a Jekyll image. That's because this site runs on GitHub Pages, which is going to use Jekyll and Ruby. So it's really cool. I could configure my code space with all the kinds of languages, tool sets, VS Code extensions that I really need. It's also worth noting that you can use dev containers in VS Code Desktop as well with that dev containers extension I was mentioning. So you can have the same configuration, again, no matter wherever you're working. We've also found that dev containers are a broadly useful tool beyond just VS Code or just GitHub code spaces. So we opened up a dev container specification last year with that goal in mind. And containers.dev, which I'm about to run now, is going to be your perfect spot to learn all about the spec as well. So I'll go back to the readme. Got a little bit sidetracked by my love of dev containers there. And I'm just going to copy this command to launch our app. Let's paste it, and let's see our website run. You're going to see it looks just like if I were to run a Jekyll or Ruby app locally. And cool, Codespaces even took care of port forwarding for me. That's really convenient. I'll open this up in the browser, get connected to my port. And there we go. We can see we are at our uh, dev container website, which again, you can actually access today at containers.dev. Super recommend checking that out. We can see it has that change I made as well. And I can click through. It's just like the real website is. And this was a really convenient way to be able to explore an app, make changes, and run it without having to worry about installing anything on my local machine, which is awesome. So now that we've gotten an overview of some things that we've done from 2019 to 2021, I want to pass it over to Connor here to talk about some of the other work that we've been doing in the remote space. Uh, yeah, thanks, Bridget. So like as Bridget showed, uh, Codespaces was a big step forward in allowing people to 
uh, uh, like easily like spin up and, and like connect to and develop their uh, code anywhere. Um, so you can like just go on GitHub, like spin up code space, like connect to it and, and get going. But at some point, we realized that there's more to, to like development than just like running your code on like GitHub. So people have like home servers, like PCs, VMs, and stuff that they want to connect to and be able to develop there as well. Uh, so the traditional way to do this has been through uh, like remote SSH. So um, it, it's like you run like an SSH service on, on your server, then you connect there, and then you're connected. Um, so our first prototype of what became tunnels was actually building a remote SSH for the web. But we realized that like this isn't actually kind of the whole story. So if you have a, a home PC or even just like a VM behind a firewall, you probably don't have a static IP or like an open port that you can just, that, that you can just connect to. So that brought us to the idea of tunnels, where um, if someone can like install and like run a service on, on their machine and then access it from, um, like, over the, like over the internet, then we could have them be able to open it on VS Code Dev. Um, so uh, that's what became this new kind of enhanced code CLI. Um, so VS Code has always had a command, a command line interface face built into the desktop application. If you've installed VS Code, you've probably seen like a little checkbox like "Add code to my path" um, when you install VS Code. Um, but now we actually have a CLI base, uh, being able to be uh, downloaded and installed as a standalone component. Um, um, and with this, we added a tunnel subcommand as well as a remote tunnels extension. Um, so, so I built a new CLI. So um, the VS Code itself is a desktop application, but in order to actually like run this on a server, you probably don't have a desktop environment there. So we wanted a, a binary that you could download and run on a server uh, uh, separately from the entire VS Code install. Uh, we also wanted to make sure that the CLI had an identical interface, whether you installed it via desktop or whether you downloaded the new CLI itself. Um, and then finally, yeah, we saw this idea of if we have this like remote capable, like um, installable CLI, we could also use that to, to kind of like consolidate how we, how we do our notes in VS Code. So. Uh, today, for example, uh, dev containers can connect to a container running over SSH, running over SSH or running WSL, but to, but to do this, it actually re-implements like a large chunk of logic that's found in the SSH extension, found in the WSL extension. Um, and then, serving, and then similar, similarly, uh, you can use remote SSH to SSH into a Windows machine, but, but you can't then open a WSL workspace like you could if you're actually running uh, locally on that machine. So um, if we're building this like new CLI that we can use that we can use like for tunnels, like can we also use this to enable kind of this like nesting of remotes through a common protocol that would then say let uh, like WSL call through a tunnel and be able to like actually open a real WSL workspace called into a Windows into a Windows PC, and that's something that we're still, that we're still working on that we should have news on um, probably in the coming iterations. Um, so as I mentioned. Uh, uh, this CLI uh, needed to be like easily installable, uh, portable, and then also if it's being used in these other modes, it also has to be pretty small and fast to install. Um, so VS Code itself, as you probably know, is a fairly large electron application. Um, it bundles like a lot of our own code, uh, but also a large chunk of like Chromium and Node.js. Um, so kind of the like next kind of like natural step for us as like a TypeScript kind of shop uh, would be to build the CLI using Node uh, using Node.js. Um, and, and while that would have been like fairly easy, uh, Node.js itself is already like a 44 megabyte ish download, uh, plus whatever other code that we might add, to, that, that we actually have to like write our, ourselves to enable this scenario. Um, so that actually brought us to building this new CLI as the first large component of VS Code to be written in Rust. Um, and like as a result, um, it actually worked out pretty well. So the, the CLI is currently about a six megabyte download and takes about uh, the same amount of RAM. So that really um, it, like enables you to like run this. Um, like in the background, even on like a small, you know, 120, 120, 120 megabyte like VM that you might have, uh, without really impacting your kind of day to day operations. Um, so yeah, uh, now let's actually see how this works, and and I'll uh, go ahead and actually run this new tunnel CLI. There we go. Hopefully my screen comes up there. There we go. Yeah. So to download the CLI, um, uh, like you can go to our code.visualstudio.com homepage. And then, if you, and then if you choose other platforms, you'll see that we have now, um, as of I think a month or, or a month or two ago, this new CLI download at the bottom of each platform. So depending on what platform you're on, um, if you're running a server, it's a good chance you're on Linux. You can go ahead and, and download that through there. Um, and then usually you, you probably want to actually you, you probably actually want to copy the download link there and, and just download it directly onto your server. So I've already done that. So let's go ahead and actually connect to my server. 
Um, I just have a little, a little like Minecraft server that I run for, for me and my friends here. So I'll switch into that to get started. Um, I'll then go to a code CLI folder here. And the first thing I, I want to do is I'll use wget to actually download the CLI. So I will download that there. You see it's pretty fast, about six megabytes, as I said. Um, and, and now let's go ahead and extract that. Uh, try to remember my tar arguments. And it looks like we did that there. So now um, if you run code, you'll see the usual help. This is pretty similar to what you get if you run uh, the desktop VS Code CLI. Um, but you see we have this new subcommand called tunnel. So I'll go ahead and run that. I think I've already logged onto the server once, so it won't ask, so it won't ask me to log in again. So it, sh it should just be able to uh, start the tunnel and then I'm and, then, and then now it's running and I can connect to it. So uh, you can connect to it in VS Code Dev, but the first thing I'll do is actually show you how to connect on desktop. So if you're running on, so um, if you're running like VS Code Desktop, you can actually connect to this tunnel just like you could if you were, for example, running a code space where you can connect to code space from VS Code Desktop. Uh, to do that, what you want to do is first look for the remote tunnel extension. Then you'll want to go ahead and install that. There we go. And then once you have this, you can open the, uh, the remote explorer on the left-hand side right there. And you'll see that there's this new option for a remote. So you have tunnels and SH both, both in one view. And we see that we actually have this Minecraft, my, my tunnel here called Minecraft is, is running. So I can go ahead and connect that. And then it'll connect to that and it'll probably download the VS Code server. So uh, we actually don't uh, basically run the VS Code server that runs all your extensions by default. Uh, uh, we only run that after you actually connect to it. And so this is to help minimize our footprint, to make sure it's like a small, as small and speedy as possible, at least until you actually are running stuff on there. Um, so now that we're connected, uh, you can um, like open a folder just like you normally would. I can go ahead and open the, the little folder that I was uh, working in before. And we can see that inside this folder, we have the, the code CLI, um, as well as that archive that I just downloaded here. Um, we have a, a full terminal. I'm not sure why that's still, still popping up. I might have to fix that. Um, yeah, so uh, now I can do everything that I would normally want to do uh, j just like this. So um, this is like fine if I'm, if I'm running locally, but then like what if I'm, you know, on the go and like someone pings me on Discord and says, hey, you know, the Minecraft server is down. So um, you can also use VS Code Dev from any device in order to, in order to do that. So I actually have a, a little iPad emulator here, which is kind of small, but you can probably see it. Um, so if I have my iPad, I can just go to uh, VS Code Dev right there. And then if you open VS Code Dev, you actually get the uh, the 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 the, the uh, remote tunnel extension built in by default on VS Code Dev. So you have to hit the sign in button here. So I'll go ahead and allow it to sign into GitHub. Oop, there we go. Authorize that. And then once you're signed into GitHub, you should see the tunnels here. And then just like you would on desktop, you can connect to that tunnel. And then you'll see that we are now connected. Once it boots up. And we have a, 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 full term, a full terminal there. I'll just continue this on on um, on my main PC just so that you can actually see what I'm doing. So I'll go ahead and just open VS Code Dev here. Um, it's um, it's just like how like Bridget showed for for code spaces. Uh, you can uh, then like create files, and then you can also like forward ports. So forwarding ports works in tunnels just like it does in um, in code spaces. So what I can do is go ahead and like make a like new like home page. I can say like hello world and then I can serve it. And then you'll see that it automatically forwarded the port and and I can go ahead and open that and open that in my browser just like I could in code spaces. So yeah, uh, so that's how tunnels works. Um, uh, I'll can, like go ahead and um, give it a shot today. Um, yeah, so uh, uh, I, uh, with this like kind of like new sub tooling, um, it's obviously like a new language for a traditionally attached script, attached script um, a, a product. Um, so like there were some challenges. Uh, yeah, first of all, um, there's a lot. There's like a lot of excitement inside of Microsoft for Rust, and you and you might have seen like some news articles about like you know different parts of, of Windows now being written um, in Rust. But it's still a new language at a company where we have like very mature processes. For example, if you're writing a C sharp application, you know C sharp has been around for I think 21 years or so, and Rust has been around for much for a much shorter period of time than that. 
Uh, so like there's a lot of like kind of questions and stuff that have good answers and, um, and good scenarios if you're writing C sharp but don't have uh, the same kind of like processes in place uh, for Rust yet. Um, and then also similar, and also similar, similarly, if you're interacting with systems like in Microsoft, um, all the cloud tooling and stuff like isn't really made for Rust yet. So for example, the tunnel service is owned by a separate team um, in Microsoft, and we had to kind of write um, the, the the Rust tunnels SDK because they didn't have the um, the you know, knowledge or time to like build out a whole new language of, of SDK just for us. But more importantly, is making sure that the uh, community can still actually 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 contribute to VS Code. So um, as others have mentioned, VS Code is, is a project built on open source, and and the community is incredibly is incredibly important for us. So like we want to make sure that uh, the bar to contribution is still like very low, both for internal as well as external contributors. Um, so if, if someone is, is like a attached group or a JavaScript developer and they just want to like patch you know a quick bug in VS Code, uh, like we don't want to have them have to install. Rust or or worse, like learn Rust to actually be able to to contribute, um, and, and this is something that that, that that we're still working on that we're like continuing to tackle as the CLI kind of um, gets more ingrained in in VS Code. Uh, for example, like one idea is that um, um, like most developers have like a container system running on their machine um, already for some reason by this point. So something that we could do is we see that uh, like there are, there are containers locally, but there's Rust locally. We could um, automatically build the CLI inside of a container instead of building it. Uh, locally um, on the user's device. Um, yeah, so uh, that's uh, kind of a quick overview of the latest addition to the uh, VS Code uh, like remote family of, of extensions and scenarios. Um, and I'll turn it back to, to Bridget to uh, finish this off. Thanks, Connor. Mm -hmm. um, so as we've seen today, we have a unified set of remote experiences that are suitable for just about anything. Uh, at its core, VS Code is a code editor, and it integrates with other environments through these remote and web technologies to become even more powerful and flexible. You can really make your VS Code environment what you want and need it to be, which is what allows us to use VS Code to develop anything from anywhere. We want to thank you so much for joining our session today. We're really excited to hear your questions and your feedback. We've included some resources that mention um, some of the things we talked about today, so we'd love for you to check them out. And as always, happy coding. Thank you so much, Bridget and Connor. I think it is always so exciting to be able to hear how you can use VS Code outside of the limitations of your local machine. So it's so cool to see all the options you have. We do have a few questions from the chat. Um, so first off, can you say, what's the difference between VS Code.dev, GitHub.dev, and Codespaces? Yeah, that's a great question. So VS Code.dev was the first technology that we saw me demo today. And you could think of that as your lightweight version of VS Code, where you want to explore some code. And maybe it's something you have on your local machine. Or maybe it's something in GitHub or something in Azure repos or somewhere else. You can do quick exploration, quick edits, look at issues and pull requests as well. And then once you're ready to truly run that code and get a little bit more of a compute-backed experience, then you can tr go transition over to GitHub Code Spaces or your desktop VS Code. And GitHub.dev is just like VS Code.dev, but it's a bit more GitHub-focused. So you can actually go to any GitHub repo and hit the dot key. GitHub.dev will load up. So it's just a little bit more GitHub-themed. Interesting. That's great. Um, well, I had, you mentioned tunnels before. So how are tunnel data Excuse me. How is tunnel data secured? Uh, yeah. So like you did. Uh, so like you. Did, I like actually didn't see me like log in when I first started uh, uh, running tunnel because I already, already logged in the, on that machine. But on both ends of the tunnel, you have to log in either with GitHub or Microsoft in order to um, authenticate yourself, and then you can only connect it to your own tunnels. Um, and then also once you're once you're connected to a tunnel, then like your data is actually uh, uh, like end-to-end -end encrypted from uh, both the your local machine to your remote server. So we can't intercept it. Like no one can, can read your data. Um, yeah. Awesome. And um, Parson App in the chat asks, um, can you use the remote development in network restricted environments like over internet without GitHub? Um, so uh, like you do need to actually be able to like connect uh, to the, uh, above GitHub in order to authenticate, as well as to our tunnel service uh, domain name in order to actually like establish the tunnel from end to end. Um, both of these like domain names are actually published on, on our documentation. Um, so if you go to uh, uh, code.visualstudio.com and go into the like remote tunnel section of the docs, um, then I, I, I don't know what it is off the top of my head, uh, but you can make sure that uh, like that domain is allowed listed inside of your firewall, and then you, sh you should be able to, to have that work. Awesome. 
Yeah, awesome. Thank you.、Uh, so we have another question from Carlos in the chat, and they ask, "Are all my plugins in my VS Code desktop synced with the VS Dev Web version?" That's a great question. So they totally can be. You can turn on setting sync, and then you can log in via GitHub or Microsoft. And then once you have setting sync enabled, then you can bring over everything—not only your extensions, but also other key bindings and settings, let's say—and bring that into the web editor. And you can bring them to GitHub Code Spaces too. That's such a good call out because I feel like we just talked、um, and saw Sandeep talk a bit about setting sync. So it's really cool to be able to see that、um, into the remote development space as well. Um, and one thing, actually, I do want to、uh, call back to Bridget that you mentioned was hitting the dot for GitHub dot dev. I feel like that is such a lesser known feature that people know about.、Um, so can you just reiterate that one more time? Absolutely. So you can go to any repo on GitHub dot com, and if you just press the period key or the dot key on your keyboard, it's going to load up that VS Code for the web experience. So it's going to be more GitHub focused. So for instance, you're only going to be loading up GitHub repos in there. So if you decide, hey, this is awesome, I'd also like to load up some repos elsewhere or stored locally, then you can also move over to VS Code dot dev. Awesome. That's one of my favorite things to showcase anytime we're in front of people and be like, "Hey, did you know I'm literally just hitting the dot key?" And then, boom, you have this entire editor in your web. It's so cool.、Um, okay, one other question we have in the chat. We have、uh, Marco asks, "On my desktop, I use Dev containers for development. If I open a tunnel through VS Code Desktop, I can't work with the container. Any chance to add support for that?"、Uh, yeah. So、uh, it's part of like what I mentioned, where, where we have kind of the CLI acting as kind of the, the glue code.、Um, It's currently like not possible yet, but actually I'm、um, I was like working this week on it. So uh, uh, soon、um, I expect it probably like with, with the next a few iterations in the next few months we'll enable that.、Um, probably starting with Abusel is what we're working with for the first of all. I love that we're able to talk about things coming up.、I、we get、know. to talk about talk with you all who are actively working on the product right now.、Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for that demo,、um, and I I appreciate being able to jump into that. So just to note that we got a couple of questions from the chat. Keep going with the chat.、Mm -hmm. We're going to be here all day. We love to talk with you, and we have. Tons of knowledgeable moderators in the chat helping you out, and sometimes they're going to be able to get into the live stream, and we'll shout you out. Yeah, absolutely. So thank you so much, Bridget and Connor. It was a pleasure hearing from you,、um, and we're excited to see how everyone can use remote development in their workflows.